creatures of Nat here. Um, in this video, I wanted to just go through some of the dolls that I have available that are looking for homes in my shop. Um, I've been working on other things at the moment, so uh, I haven't got a doll prepared for this week to go up in my shop. But I thought it would be a good chance um, just to show you what's available and how they pose and stuff like that because uh, you can't really tell much from um, just pictures itself. So I thought um, I could show you its posability and um, the way it looks, like kind of like live rather than um, just in pictures. So the first one we have, we've got Flagine, the Darklands Dragon. And he is available in my um, shop at creaturesofnat.com. Um, so what we have is... It's a, my first sort of dragon that I've hand sewn the whole body. Um, and actually sewn without faux fur. So um, it's kind of like a scaly material um, that I found in my local craft store. Um, so I wanted to try something a bit different with this one. So he has a glass eyes uh, cast inside the head. He's got the antlers that are kind of like a softer clay. It's an air dry clay, so they're not so fragile as Sculpey because Sculpey can be quite fragile. Um, and the wings are made from um, like a fake suede and they're fully poseable as well. So they can go anywhere. The little thumb here is also poseable, just kind of gently. Um, and also on the other side, there's the veining inside, so you can uh, move that around as well. Um, and so he has a ball and socket armature, um, not a wire one for this particular doll. Uh, the ball and socket armature is probably a little bit too big for this particular doll, but it works quite well. I just like the feet to be a little bit thinner. Um, and like the ankle area, but um, I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out um, for having been my first um, scale fabric non faux fur um, body. So we have um, a whole lot of spines on him as well. Uh, so they're all cast in resin. So um, I think that kind of finished the doll off really well. And also, um, don't know if you can see the body all too well, but he's got like kind of a big chest area. Um, so yeah, so that's the first one that's available. So you can head to my shop and find him there. I do have payment plans available if um, you would like to do something like that. So just email me through my shop and I'll get back to you with, um, and we can organize something. So I'm pretty flexible. Uh, the next one, the next one we have is Nuta the Snowcap Fox. So this is my first fox from my new um, 2.0 uh, fox sculpt because um, my old one, the mold sort of finished its life. So it needed a new one. So I decided to go with a bigger fox. Um, the other one was really, really small, but I wanted to do something that was the size of my wolves. So this is the fox. Um, he, she also has a uh, plastic ball and socket armature inside with the glass eyes. So she has blue glass eyes and she's fully poseable and the legs are fully poseable and also her big fluffy tail. So, and she can go in a number of different poses. Um, I kind of base this one off a marbled fox, but not so marbled. Um, and also kind of like an albino white fox as well. But um, I didn't actually want like an albino one with pink eyes or anything. So I went for the blue eyes with that one. So she's also available in my shop. Uh, you can check her out on there. The next one we have is Koyo the Autumn Kitsune. And this is one of my Kitsune sculpts with the Japanese inspired no mask or no mask. Um, so she has maple leaves on her face uh, and just some markings and stuff as well. So this is resin. Uh, she has a orange body. Uh, it's fully orange with a big fluffy tail. Um, 
this is a wire armature inside so not a plastic one um, someone actually bought this and didn't pay for it um, and then I never heard from them again so um, please don't do that because <laughs> um, it's just really really inconvenient if that happens if you can't afford it um, just ask me if you wanted to do a payment plan but just don't buy it and then never contact me again it's kind of not nice um, but anyway she is available as well on my website so she's got like a fox type body as well uh, so and she's also pretty poseable as well so we'll sit her back down and there you go so the next one it's the same sort of deal, um, her name is Hanami the Sakura Kitsune and the same thing happened with this one, somebody bought her and I never heard from her again. Um, they even put a deposit down and they just disappeared so, eh, whatever. Um, and it happens so much more frequently than you think as well, so um, yeah, just please don't do that. <laughs> So she has um, some cherry blossoms painted on her face, uh, the face is also resin and it's a nice Mongolian faux fur which this one's really nice and I actually don't have any more of it left so that's kind of a shame. And I really like this girl and sort of didn't really want to get rid of her but I, I can't keep all of my dolls unfortunately, I don't have that much space. Um, but she's got a nice white chest. And it sort of blends in uh, with her pinky fur around the back. She's got a nice big tail and the same sort of fox body. Um, and also a wire armature inside as well. So she is also looking for a home. So there you have it. Now the next one is one of my big boys. Uh, I kind of really like this one as well. Uh, I went for something completely different with this particular doll. So as you can see... It's quite big. It's really, really big. Kind of the size of like a small dog. Um, and yeah, I just went for something completely different. So I went for, I, oh my God, I almost took my eye out. So I went for pupilless eyes and I made these eyes as well. So they've kind of got like a blue, silvery sort of glow to them. Um, the horns are also plastic. So they won't break. So they're not made by me. I, I purchased them online. Um, so they're pretty sturdy and they're like, you really have to break them if you wanted to break them. So I painted them up in this black colour and I kind of wrote some ancient sort of writing um, that I just kind of made up in a blue to silver. So it's sort of a bit reflective. If you, I don't know if you can see. Can you see that on the camera or not? Not too sure. Um, so this is my biggest doll that I made to date. Um, so I've made quite a few of them and they usually get snapped up pretty quickly. Um, but as with size, it comes with um, a bigger price tag. So I know that's not really um, uh, reachable for a lot of people. But um, I shouldn't really apologise for the price of art anyway because... That just op opens up a whole can of worms. Anyway, um, so I put all these ancient sort of markings on the body and on the head. <laughs> Woo! Um, and also on the back of the ears. It's got some sort of reminiscent of um, some art from Tigers. Um, but uh, we have the body here. And same sort of deal with the hooves. Um, I put the ancient writing on the hooves as well, um, so that's resin, the head is also resin, antlers are plastic, um, plastic ball and socket armature, so really really sturdy doll, and here's what we have. Mm. Ah, so he is available as well. The next one is also dear, so I made this for someone and they had like a change of mind and wanted one of my other dolls. So this one is looking for a home now. So, uh, what's his name again? I can't remember the name of some of my things. Uh, Solus the Ancient Sun Stag. So the other one, the other deer that you saw was... 
Olmec the Ancient Ice Stag. So this is sort of the same um, theme, we're like ancient stags, uh, if that makes sense. So the same theme, um, handmade the eyes, so they're like a reflective gold pink. Um, so they're quite cool. Uh, I'm thinking about hand making these eyes because somebody did ask me if they could, you know, where I got them from and I said that I made them. So I was thinking about doing some of these eyes, but I don't know yet. Uh, I have to sort of perfect it a bit more before I'd want to sell them. So I don't know, it just depends what people are happy with. Anyway, so same deal here. Got the plastic horns and they got like a, a black undercoat of paint. And I painted the rest with like a copper bronze colour and painted the tips a gold, um, so they're pretty sturdy as well. Um, I used this notorious fabric that I used on my lemurs. If you followed me on my Instagram, you'll know that I made quite a few dolls for the Calgary Zoo in Canada and some of them were lemurs. So I found this fur that was very, very similar to lemur fur but it is a nightmare to work with and I have a video on my channel why it's a nightmare to work with um, but it's like super super soft it's like the softest fur that I've ever felt and we have like a nice sunburst coloured body and a little black tail and then also the the hooves are also the same sort of coppery colour as well with the black legs and a black underbody the face I've added some markings and also some markings to the forehead with a little gem so don't know that's what I felt like putting on it so that's what came and then like a little sunburst of color on the sides of the head as well so I'm really happy with the way that turned out I like the way that looks um, and oh yeah longer sort of fur here so it gives it a bit of fluffiness. Um, and yeah, so Solus is now looking for a home as well. Next we have Makwa, the great horned bear. And this is one of my older bears. I'm thinking about doing a new bear sculpt as well. Um, just because this is like one of my first sort of sculpts. Um, so he's a fluffy, fluffy dude. Um, I'm thinking of trimming him a little bit maybe. I'm not too sure yet. I just like the scragginess of his little legs and stuff so he has a wire armature inside and he's got nice painted red eyes uh, with some these are actually sculpy horns uh, on his head as you can see they're sort of ram horn esque uh, and they're painted up um, with acrylic paints so one of my older dolls, I used to put these on their heads, which I still do, um, just depends what type of doll it is, uh, but it kind of ended up, I don't know, I like to do different things and different sort of themes and stuff, but it's got a nice white snout, so to break up all the green, um, and a nice squishy body, and a little tail here, with his resin claws as well, so cute little dude alright so he is available in my shop as well so the last one we have is Iwa the black river bunny and this one wasn't this one just put up uh, not that long ago uh, so she has nice painted eyes a nice blue color um, a resin head little flappy ears uh, has got some whiskers and stuff and she also has a nice white underbelly with little resin feet and she's really cute I really like this new rabbit sculpt it's got a nice white fluffy tail as well eee, so cute uh, and sort of this leopardy kind of faux fur uh, and then this longer faux fur for the tail um, and she has a wire armature inside as well she's quite a small doll compared to <laughs> compared to my dears um, so she's also available for adoption in my shop Woo. but I had a few people asking about her so I don't know how long she'll last 
um, so uh, yeah, I'm sorry if you miss out. Um, but sometimes you just have to be a little bit quicker these days. So that's her. So that is the last of my dolls actually that are available. But I do have other things available, so I'll quickly show you them. So I have two resin unicorn horns, so they are available. Um, one is this blue color, so it just needs to be cleaned up and stuff. Um, so it just needs to be trimmed around here and just like sanded and stuff and seam lines done and maybe like little bits and pieces of air bubbles and stuff need to be fixed. But that's really, really easily done. So if you're looking for a unicorn horn for some reason, um, there they are. I also have this sort of like a pinky, purpley tone one. Um, I originally made these for this uh, lady that wanted to put them on her horses so it's got like a bit of an angle so I drilled some holes through so there could be a strap and it sort of fits on the horse's head like that um, and I also did these for a TV commercial in Sydney I think it was don't know what it for what what it was for they didn't tell me but um, they needed it really quickly so I painted up some pearl unicorn horns um, just like this and Never heard from him again. <laughs> um, next we have some different jewellery pieces. So something a bit more affordable for people. Um, so what we have here is some jewellery pieces. So we have the symbols of um, air, fire, water and earth. So they all have the, these um, different triangles uh, embedded onto them and the uh, moss put on in different areas as well so um, they're like little tablets uh, in rock rock form and they are resin uh, and then we also have like ruin ancient ruin tablets as well so they're meant to be like um, kind of like ancient things that you find in in the world that I made um, like little tablets and jewelry things that they used to make um, and they are on uh, twine, uh, like a necklace thing, and um, they have, each has their own separate little um, beads, and they're held together by these little clasps, you know, regular clasps, or you can just slip them over your head, and that way you can wear it sort of like that. So pretty cool, actually. Maybe I'll keep one and wear it around. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And I'll quickly show you the um, the tablet as well. So this is how the tablet will sit. So that's how the tablet will sit. So they're quite a good length, um, not too short, not too long, so they sit quite nicely. Um, so yeah, I think they're pretty cool actually. Quite like them. Uh, what else do I have? Um, mm, I have a lot of watercolours as well that are available, so I'll quickly show you them too. Okay, just quickly before the, um, the watercolours, I just wanted to show you these masks. So it's not something that I'm... I'm kind of learning how to make masks, so I've always been interested in masks, and um, yeah, I kind of always like them. So this is one of them. It's a lower jaw Hanya mask. So I sculpted this out of monster clay, cast it in resin, and painted it up. So it has a strap on it um, with sort of like some fabric that um, so it sort of rests against your cheeks. Uh, it's elastic and it sort of fits like that um, so like that um, so it's kind of good for someone with a bigger head I've got a bit of a pea head um, so um, I made it just a tad bigger because my head's really small <laughs> and the next one is the same thing I haven't put a strap on it though but it has like some padding it is a wolf mask 
So this is my very, very first mask that I actually made. So it was like a huge achievement for me to actually make something like this because I didn't know what I was doing. I've never seen anyone make a mask before. It was just, I came up with this thing in my head and gave it a go. Um, oh yeah, I should also add, these are painted in acrylic paints um, and they are sealed with a Liquitex um, sealer so the paint won't chip. And this one's a verdigris type um, paint job. This one's also a verdigris type paint job. Um, so if you're not sure what this type of paint job is. It's supposed to be like um, like a bronze that has aged. So hence what happens to bronze when it... Instead of rusting, it goes green. So it's called verdigris. So it sort of fits like that. Or... You can mount it on the wall, which um, I quite like masks mounted on a wall. So that's why I haven't put any straps on it, because I, I like masks on a wall rather than wearing them. Um, so it's kind of up to the, the buyer if they want to put a strap on it. Strap on it. <laughs> and then last one. Um, I also have raw casts of these, so um, uh, they're sort of made to order, but I don't have... A whole lot of time to make to order things so I was thinking of actually taking them off for a little while just because I don't have a lot of time so the last one is a spirit wolf mask so this one's um, a little bit different because it actually has I wanted sort of like a Donnie Darko type vibe to it um, so a spirit wolf is something that I did a while ago as in doll form and I wanted to recreate it but like kind of a Donnie Darko type creepiness to it but having some markings and stuff on it so I actually really like this mask so um, I, I kind of haven't really been pushing it to sell because maybe I'll keep it mm. it looked good on the wall to be honest as like a creepy thing I, I really like it um, but anyway so it is a resin mask it is covered in um, What's that material that you put like over cooking? It's like a mesh material, uh, like a cotton mesh. Um, it's kind of like bandage material. Um, so I made it sort of a bit weathered. So I don't know if you can see the texture of it. Um, but I want it to look like a really organic looking. Um, so I covered the whole face with this particular material. Um, and painted it black. This took a long time and I got black paint like everywhere. <laughs> um, and I also did just plain green eyes because I thought it was a little bit creepy than having pupils. So pupilless eyes were a little cooler. So it uh, kind of looks cool like that. And then I also added these markings to the face using some white um, paint. And I really like the way it turned out because it looks like, like it's kind of been... I don't know, haphazardly put on there, I guess. Um, and then I sort of added like a purple bits here and there just to reference the purple um, faux fur that I put everywhere. So I made like a mane out of it um, with the white chin hair and also the black ears. I also put a strap on it with some... Um, padding on the inside so if you wanted to wear this that's sort of what it looks like um, but would look really cool on the wall um, so yeah I think this is m m kind of like my favorite sort of mask um, but I have painted up a Hanya mask as well, so I have that to mount to a wall. Um, that was one where the paint didn't really dry properly, if you saw that video. Um, so I kind of want to keep that one. I might give it to someone as a present, because I don't really want to sell it, because I'm not 100% happy with the paint job. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to sell that one, because uh, I don't really want to sell things that I'm not happy with. So, but yeah. So they're the three masks that I have available and I also have some watercolours as well. 
So just quickly, so I have some mushroom watercolors that are available as well. So there's one here, there's that one as well. Um, I also have one sort of alpine watercolor left as well. The other one was sold. And I have a, a whole lot of these um, like galaxy, galaxy creatures as well for sale. So they are actually um, the original paintings uh, that I have up in my shop. Um, I've made quite a few of them, so there's not really a whole lot of them left. Um, but it's just something that I don't think a lot of people know that I do as well, because I don't really push it all that much. Um, but... So... Alright, here are watercolors so I, I've actually got a few that I'm thinking of um, putting up as well so ones like this and I, I kind of want to do more and then put them up as like a couple like a series or something um, so there are these are the creatures that I have made in doll form and I've sort of painted them as like a whole piece with like what represents it um, down below so that is one of the lines I can't remember the name of it I've made too many <laughs> Um, this was also the spirit wolf that, um, you saw the mask of, uh, so that is painted up in, like, a Hitadama type of thing, so it's like a Japanese spirit that sort of gets stuck in purgatory and hangs around. This was just something like an experiment, it is a, um, black panther with an aurora in it. I haven't got these up for sale, but I think I'm just gonna wait. Um, and I will offer these as like die cut stick stickers as well. Um, just need some time to do it. Uh, I have a wolf that I experimented with. Uh, that was like my first one that I did. Um, a waterfall fox. So I'm not really happy with this. I'm not really happy with everything. Um, this one's one of my favorite ones that I've done. Um, it's got a really nice aurora in the middle. Uh, I'm going to offer these as prints, this one in particular, because I kind of really liked this one and wanted to keep it. Um, so I'm going to offer this as prints, but at like a much, much cheaper rate than the original. Um, just have to... Uh, uh, I think I got cut off then. Um, I just have to work on the actual piece. Um, so we've got this one available. It's a panther. Uh, I've got this one, it's a more simpler sort of version, and someone said, is it walking up or down the tree, and I was like, what? Or looking up, looking at you, or looking away, and I was like, ooh, optical illusion. Um, we've got, uh, Lynx as well. Uh, this one I'm keeping, because I really, really like this one, but I will offer it as a print. Um, I just like the way the Aurora sort of came out. Um... This one, uh, it's not up at the moment, I don't think, but um, I probably will put it up. Uh, we have an owl, so it's got a nice galaxy in it. Uh, I've got a spiral galaxy cat, so that one's available. Um, what else do we have? A nebula wolf. <clears throat> a bear. Um, I also have this one. So this was like one of my very first ones that I did. Um, and then we have something called a red wolf as well. So um, that was like a project that I worked on for a while. So I've got quite a few red wolf things. I was thinking of making a, um, what do you call it? Book where you sort of come up with your own idea and stuff. Um, so we have another lion, uh, I forgot what that one was called, but it was also a creature that I made. Uh, got a stag. So I don't know if all of these are actually in my shop, but um, look, if you're interested, just message me and I can actually put it up uh, in my shop for you. So we have another sort of blue wolf that I played around with. Uh, another red wolf picture. Um, so yeah, a couple of other little things, but... Um, yeah, so have a look in my shop if you want any of those. If they're not in there, just feel free to message me um, anything, whatever time, um, and we can have a chat or 
something like that. Um, so that's pretty much what's available. Um, I will have some more things going up soon. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what's available. I have some more watercolours going up soon, so it'll be a collection um, and some die-cut stickers and stuff. Oh, that's right. Sticker packs. So I've got a woodland sticker pack. So that one is available. Um, I've got a celestial sticker pack. Oops. Uh, where I've made, um, illustrated all of these and I've got one of my creatures down there. Um, Another one, Alpine Ridge sticker pack. So it's also got one of my creatures and some cool little uh, stickers there for you. And we've got a winter sticker set. So something a little bit different. Uh, it's got an owl and a stag. Um, and just like a non-coloured version of the Alpine Ridge sticker set as well. So they're available. And they're quite cheap if anybody I know a lot of people wanted some stuff of mine that was cheap um, so that's pretty much the cheapest things that you can get are those um, so yeah you can check out my shop at creaturesofnat.com and you can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook at creatures of Nat and my YouTube obviously if you're watching this uh, and that's it I'll catch you in the next one bye <laughs>